In this video, we're going to look at a method for finding where a function is increasing and where it is decreasing by examining its derivative. This graph shows a function that's increasing. And by that, we mean that if you increase the input value, like the x, the result will increase the output value, like the y. So if we were to draw a tangent line at any point along this increasing function, notice that the tangent line would have a positive slope. And remember that the slope of the tangent line is given by the derivative. That means this derivative would be positive. Anywhere the function is increasing, the function will have a positive derivative. Now we're actually going to use this observation in the reverse direction. If a function has a positive derivative, that means the function is increasing there. And if the function has a negative derivative, that means the function is decreasing there. And we can talk about this on intervals. So for example, if it turns out that the function has a positive derivative between 0 and 7, that means when you plug in x values between 0 and 7, the function must be increasing throughout that interval. The intervals can be infinite in length. So the interval could have an endpoint of infinity or negative infinity. Let's look at an example. Here we have a function x cubed minus 27x. And we want to figure out where it's increasing and where it's decreasing by using the derivative. So first of all, we would take the derivative which for this function ends up being 3x squared minus 27. Then we're going to find the critical points. So we want to know where is the derivative equal to 0. We could solve this by, say, factoring and notice that you're going to have critical points when x minus 3 is 0 or when x plus 3 is 0. So that means your critical points, critical values, occur at x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. Next we're going to illustrate these critical values on a number line. This represents a number line of x values and somewhere on that number line is a negative 3 and somewhere to the right of that is a positive 3. Those are both critical values for this function. So the derivative is 0 at those points, and we're indicating that above the number line. So these blue zeros means, mean that f prime is 0 when you plug in these x values, 3 and negative 3. Now let's check what happens if we plug in a value in between 3 and negative 3. Something easy to check would be 0. If we take f prime of 0, we get negative 27. The important thing is that that's negative. So if we plug in a 0, or actually if we plug in anything between negative 3 and 3, the derivative will be negative. Let's check a couple more easy points. Let's imagine we plug in a 4. You can verify that if you do that, you're going to get 21 as the output of the derivative. That's positive. So if I plug in a 4 for the x value, I get a positive value of the derivative. Similarly, if I plug in a negative 4, I'm going to get 21 again, which is positive. And if I plug in anything less than negative 3, I'm going to get a positive output from the derivative. If I plug in anything greater than positive 3, I'm going to get a positive number out of the derivative. And if I plug in anything between negative 3 and 3, I'm going to get a negative output from the derivative. And that's what this chart is illustrating. We call this a first derivative sign chart because it's telling us the sign of the first derivative of our function. And from it, we can immediately see where the function's increasing and where it's decreasing. It's increasing on these intervals where the derivative is positive. 
and the original function is decreasing on this interval where the original where the derivative is negative. So we could summarize this by writing that the function f of x is decreasing on the interval from negative 3 to 3, meaning for every x value between those endpoints, the function is increasing. Oh, uh, sorry, decreasing. It's increasing. Well, it's increasing on two intervals. Notice it's increasing everywhere to the left of negative 3. We could describe that as the interval from negative infinity to negative 3. And it's increasing on the interval to the right of positive 3. So we could describe that as the interval from 3 to infinity. And when you have two intervals like this, a common way of expressing the fact that you want both intervals for your answer is to use what's called the union of those intervals. And we use this symbol, which is like uh, the letter U, to denote the union. And that means all of the x values here and all of the x values here combined give us our answer. So let's summarize this quickly. To find where the function is increasing and decreasing, we take a look at the derivative. We want to know where the derivative is positive and where it's negative. So first we figure out what the cutoffs are going to be between positive and negative values by figuring out where the derivative is zero. So we find our critical values. Those critical values separate the regions where the derivative is positive from the regions where the derivative is negative. So we can use those values to separate a number line and then test points in between them in order to decide whether the derivative will be positive or negative on each of those subintervals. Wherever the derivative is positive, the function is increasing. Wherever the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. And so once we have our first derivative sign chart to summarize that information, we can draw our conclusion directly from it.